Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew on the Sandbox channel, and this is the launch of Gemini 4 in the beautifully made FASA mod for Kerbal Space Program, now compatible with 0.24.2. The FASA mod adds not only the Gemini mission, but also the Saturn missions, the Explorer probe missions, the Mercury missions, all with brand new textured and modeled 3D parts in Kerbal scale which I think is absolutely amazing, and I've learned a lot doing it. I've learned about the actual shape and sizes of the rockets, because, to be honest, from pictures it's quite difficult to get it right. Um, you need a really 3D perspective to do a, a lot of the, the modeling from stock parts in Kerbal Space Program. And this mod has got them just right, as well as a lot of speculative things that were never actually launched in real life, so there's no real photos to work from. For example, a fat-bottomed... Gemini capsule straight to the moon and back. But here we are with Gemini 4, what I'm doing this time, and we have two Kerbals on board, and their mission is to do the first American spacewalk. It's very much like the, the Voshkod mission, but the, the Gemini uh, the, the Gemini launching vehicle, the Gemini capsule, had a much wider range of capabilities than the Voshkod had, and as you can see we're just about to separate into the upper stage now, which is going to take us all the way into orbit. The Titan II variant that launched the Gemini missions were only used from 64 to 66, but the Titan family, with extra solid rocket boosters, extra stages, um, and larger fairings, have been used to launch probes up until the present day. I said in the previous video that the Gemini and Voshkod were often seen as twins, as they filled very, very similar roles for their varied space programs. In a very similar time frame, it was very, very close who was going to get the first spacewalk, who was going to get the first rendezvous. But as you can see from the, the difference between the two, the Gemini had a big advantage over the Voshkod in that it had a hard docking surface in some of its variants, as well as a much more efficient... Um, what, what you can see at the bottom, the, the skirt around it, that had all of the engines and RCS modules, it had a much greater lifespan and comfort than the Voshkod. Even though the Voshkod take, could take a third pilot, and the Gemini, obviously, as the name implies, could only take two. But it is important to realise that Gemini 4 had many more mission objectives than the Russians planned with their Voshkod 2. The Gemini missions were incredibly long duration missions, sometimes up to 15 days I think was the record, and that lasted for a long time until uh, the Salyut space station was launched, and they wanted to, on this one, test a rendezvous manoeuvre with the Titan II upper stage, which I'm still burning away at the moment. They didn't manage to do that because the Americans at the time didn't understand orbital mechanics very well, they were very much like new players in Kerbal Space Program. To dock, you don't point towards the object, you do many kind of prograde retrograde birds. They didn't understand that at the time. And I'm just about to get rid of the escape tower, because we don't want to carry that with us all the way into orbit, because that wouldn't burn up in Kerbal Space Program. So we got rid of it now. And I thought I'd just take this chance to tell you guys about Patreon and to thank the guys who are already sponsoring this channel now. Thank you to the people who have already given me some help on Patreon. Remember, if you can click the link, you can help me out for as little as one oozed, one US dollar. And that is paid every time I submit content. You can do as little or as much as you like, and you can set monthly limits so you never spend too much. So yeah, after, I think, well, it was a long time. It was after about 20 minutes, I think, of trying to rendezvous with the target launch vehicle, they had to stop doing that because they needed their RCS fuel to try and recover the astronaut if he drifted away, or to even um, rearrange themselves for the re-entry burn. Because after 66 orbits, they weren't quite sure whether they would be facing in the right direction or not. At the moment though, I've got plenty of RCS. I can use it to point perfectly prograde when I get to this peak and hopefully burn out the fuel in the Titan launch vehicle. And something that Kerbal Space Program doesn't model that happened in real life as well is all of the extra fuel sloshing around in the fuel tank. 
provided impacts on the inside of the fuel tank and therefore made it spin a lot, which meant that they had to chase it and then give back as it was spinning around or it would clip the front of the Gemini vehicle. So they, they didn't do it in the end, and eventually they passed into the dark side of the planet, and with only two lights on the vehicle, as it was spinning, they could only see one light at a time, meaning that they had no orientation. So based on um, Ed White's plans and recommendations, they decided to put three lights on all future target vehicles. But here we go, we're just about in orbit. Yeah, there we go. So let's get rid of the Titan stage now. I'm not going to try and rendezvous, that's going to be in my next video where I look at the most important milestones of the Gemini program. So with the fuel that we've got left in the Gemini stage, let's just orient properly and start our burn to circularize our orbit. Just, or at least just bring it above 70,000. Okay, we're, we're, we're about good there. Brilliant. Okay, so now we're in orbit. Let's give you a bit of a better view of uh, what this mod has managed to model for the Gemini capsule. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful and incredibly true to life. The main, in real life, Gemini capsule, as you can see from these images, had exactly the same three-stage arrangement, with a fuel stage, a RCS and decoupler stage, and the re-entry vehicle, as well as a detachable nose cone that had the parachutes inside and would later provide a basis as the docking uh, connector for the Agena vehicle. And they wanted to try and do a Gemini to Gemini docking, but I don't think that ever actually happened. I could be wrong, but I don't think that happened. One of the main objectives for every single Gemini mission that went up was duration. And let's have a look what our Kerbals would have to put up with inside this vehicle for up to 15 days, I believe was the latest, 88 orbits. And it's quite, for a Kerbal, it looks quite luxurious, but for the humans, it was like being stuck inside the front seat of a little car for... For all of that time, they had no time to move. They were supposed to stay in their suits until the spacewalk, obviously, because they couldn't switch around and things like that. It was very difficult for Gemini 4. Later missions, they would go up in kind of like um, flight suits and then get into their spacesuits later. But I love the beautiful mixture between the Better Atmospheres mod and the FASA mod. It looks absolutely great to do IVA flights from, from the Gemini capsule. I haven't given the Apollo capsule a try, because I want to try and do that in stock Kerbal parts, but if it's anything like this, it's it's got to be amazing. Okay, I, I really like all the controls. Obviously, this is from the different view here. But, and okay, uh, there's a sandwich in the middle. That's That's amazing detail. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Really good work, guys. So, we're back outside the capsule and we're just about ready for the spacewalk. We've just come out on the bright side of the planet. So, we've got the maximum possible time to be outside the vehicle for without problems. Good luck, brave Kerbals. Let's hope it went better for you than it went for Alexei Leonov who had to decompress his spacesuit. And there we go. The first American Kerbal in space. Very much like the mission that the Russians did, he was attached by a tether for his oxygen supply and to pull back on in case of emergency so he could get back inside the vehicle. But our Kerbal here is a little bit more realistic than last time. You know Kerbals have space, uh, they have rocket packs, jet packs. So did the Americans in a kind of way. They had a, they had a sort of handheld rocket gun that they would point in a direction and it would provide some nitrogen gas propellant. Like the kind of winch guns you see in movies, um, they would point it and move in that direction. They used it for a whole manner of things such as rolling and things, but apparently that, that wasn't useful. It was better as a point and shoot. You find the direction you want to go in and you point and you shoot. So this is the famous picture from the launch. This is Ed White floating outside his space vehicle. Ah, and actually, you can see in his hand that 
in his right hand at the top of the picture there's two metal cylinders that's the rocket propel the rocket propulsion gun that he had and this is a shot from from McDevitt inside the mercury capsule looking back at him this is what i've tried to recreate in my kerbal space program video yeah the the procedures for the Gemini mission was very different to Voshkod. Voshkod had a inflatable airlock, uh, but the Gemini pilots had to pressurize their suits and they just opened the door to their capsule and stood up, which is incredible, come to think of it, because if anything had gone wrong, that would have been death for both pilots. And it nearly was. Their door did not close when they got back inside the vehicle. But this was something that they had spotted in training, and they knew how to, to mess with the latch mechanism to close it, otherwise they would have burnt up in re-entry. So let's maneuver back to get inside the vehicle. At this stage, he pulled on his rope to move back, and he's back inside. And I said it was cramped. It's not for Kerbals, but for the real-life pilots, this is what they had to cope with. They were stuck inside there for 15 days in those suits, and at the end of the Gemini program missions, all of the pilots suffered incredibly. They had massive dehydration and uh, u like urinary, urinary problems, as well as not being able to do simple physical tasks due to the kind of comatose state that their body was in by the end of the mission. So it's a good job we've saved up some RCS to try and maneuver for re-entry. I'm going to do a pretty steep re-entry this time, just to, to bring it back for a splashdown landing, hopefully, because I think I'm going over a continent at the moment. So yeah, well, well, I'll keep checking on that. But th yeah, the Gemini mission didn't just do the EVA and things like that. It had a lot of experiments on board and things that they were trying to do for a moonshot. They were trying that even now. They took a traditional naval sextant with them to see if they could measure their position accurately using the stars. Um, they wanted to try that on the Apollo program because obviously as they got further away from the moon, there was a lot of... T further away from the Earth, sorry, from the tracking stations. There was a lot of lag time between um, between signals from the sh from the service vehicle that the three astronauts were in and the base stations. So they wanted to be able to do a lot of the programming in space so that they could be as accurate as possible when calculating their burns and re-entries and things like that. But there were also um, electrostatic charge uh, experiments, uh, magnetometers, spectrometers. They wanted to see the differences in fluctuations of radiation in space around the South Atlantic Sea. Very, very useful tests as well, using bungee cord on long duration flights um, to see whether they had the strength to operate their spacecraft after that time. So I've just detached my nose cone ready for re-entry. And as you can see, it's revealed the parachute pack at the top of that cone. It's another part in... Um, in the FASA mod that I want to use in my stock game because you can use it attached to any surface. And that's the propulsion pack gone. It's now a dead vehicle. I still have RCS pack in the top, but because the propulsion's gone, that's that's the end of that. That's not useful anymore. And my idea to land in the sea hasn't worked. I'm probably going to be going for a hard landing on land. Something that didn't happen in Gemini 4. Gemini 4 landed very, very early. It, undershot its landing but it was spotted by a helicopter which meant that the USS Wasp was able to intercept it before they had any problems with leakages or anything like that. So here we are we're at 30,000 feet and the re-entry effects are just starting. Can't see a lot from inside the cabin. Um, ah you can see some out that side. There we go. I think that's probably just camera angles from the look of it. But yeah, so guys, next week I'm back up to two videos a week after the summer break I've had. And the good news is that I'm going to be doing more of this, looking at the Gemini program, and I'm going to be doing a video on different kinds of satellites that had been launched at this point. But big news, I'm starting my new series in Kerbal Space Program. I'm doing my campaign mode with the science and economy model all working. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next week. Remember to like and subscribe. It helps out my channel a lot. And if you subscribe, you'll get the new videos exactly when they're submitted. So take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.